डियर फ्रेंड्स जय भीम नमो बुद्धाय टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस बुक अबाउट निब्बान और निर्वाण दैट इज द सबलाइम स्टेट और द स्टेट ऑफ एन अवेकेंट वन एंड एन एलाइटन वन अ स्टेट ए हायर स्टेट ऑफ आवर माइंड आई एम यूजिंग दिस बुक इट इज पब्लिश बाय बुद्धिस्ट कल्चरल सेंटर श्रीलंका Now let us start. What is Nibbana? It is it is it is written by Venerable Narad Thera. Narad Thera is a very respected monk. He is no more physically, but his blessings are there, and uh, I hope his blessings would uh, also give us courage to understand the concepts of Buddhism. So let us begin. the way to nibbana or nirvana the sublime the sublime states sublime means the awakened one the elevated ones rare is birth as a human being hard is the life of mortals do not let slip this opportunity it is quoted from dhampat <coughs> see i would read this Uh, with a high speed like so please uh, be be careful like be uh, attentive man is a mysterious being with inconceivable potentialities latent in him are both saintly characteristics and criminal tendency they may rise to the surface at unexpected moments in disco in disconcerting strength how they originated we not we know not we only know that they are dormant in man in varying degree within the powerful mind is this complex of man are also found a storehouse of virtues and a rubbish heap of evil with the development of the respective characteristics man may become either a blessing or a curse to humanity those who wish to be great noble and serviceable who wish to sub- sublimate themselves and serve humanity both by examples and by percept and who wish to avail themselves of this golden opportunity as human beings and ever their best to remove the latent vices and to cultivate the dormant virtues to dig up precious gems embodied in the earth men spend spend enormous sum of money and make laborious efforts and sometimes even sacrifice their lives but to dig up the valuable treasures latent in men only persistent effort and enduring patience are necessary even the poorest man or woman can accomplish this task for wealth is not an essential prerequisite to the accumulation of transcend tra, tra, transcend transcendental treasures it is strange that the vices latent in man seem to be almost natural and spontaneous it is equally strange that every man possesses its opposite sterling virtue which does not however appear to be so normal and automatic through still though still within the range of all one powerful destructive vice in man is anger the sweet virtue that subdues this evil force and sublimates man is loving kindness or metta cruelty is another vice that is responsible for many errors and atrocities prevalent in the world compassion is its antidote jealousy is another vice that poisons one's systems and leads to unhealthy rivalries and dangerous competitions the most effective remedy for this poisonous drug is appreciative joy there are two other universal characteristics that upset the mental equipoise of man they are attachment to the pleasure pleasurable and aversion to the non pleasurable these two opposite forces can be eliminated by developing equanimity or equilibrium 
these four sterling virtues are collectively termed in pali brahma vihar which means uh, which may be rendered by modes of sublime conduct sublime states or divine abodes these virtues tend to elevate man they make one divine in this life itself they can transform man into a superman if all try to cultivate them irrespective of creed color race or sex the earth can be transformed into a paradise where all can live in pe- perfect peace and harmony as ideal citizens of one world the four sublime virtues are also termed illimitables or unlimited unlimitedness you can say unboundedness they are also called they are so called because they find no barrier or limit and should be extended towards all beings without exception they embrace all living beings including animals irrespective of religious beliefs one can cultivate these sweet virtues and be a bless be a blessing to oneself and all others meta see the word is used meta people call it as meta i think it is meetha what we use in hindi or bhi meta is the correct way of pronunciation i would pronounce it as meta meta the first sublime state is meta see the first sublime state the first state is meta whether it is chron- chronological or not but i would put it as a chron- chronological it means that which softens one's heart or the state of a true friend it is defined as the sincere wish for the welfare and genuine happiness of all living beings without exception it is also explained as the friendly disposition or a genuine friend sincerely wishes for the welfare of his friend just as a mother protects her only child even at the risk of her life even so one should cultivate boundless kindness towards all living beings it is advice of the buddh it is not the passionate love of the mother towards her child that is stressed here but her sincere wish for the genuine welfare of her child meta is neither carnal love nor per- nor personal affection for grief inevitably arise from both meta is not neighbor- neighborliness for it makes no distinction between neighbors and others meta is not mere universal brotherhood for it embraces all living beings including animals lesser brethren and sisters and that need greater compassion as they are helpless meta is not political brotherhood or racial brotherhood or national brotherhood and even religious brotherhood political brotherhood is confined only to those who share similar political views such as the partial brother brotherhood of democrats socialists communists and so forth racial brotherhood and national brotherhood are restricted only to those of the same race and nation some nationalists love their race so much that sometimes they ruthlessly kill innocent men women and children because they unfortunately are not blessed with blonde hair and blue eyes the white race have a particular love for the white skin the black for the black the yellow for the yellow and brown for the brown the pale for the pale the red for the red others of different complexion are at at times viewed with suspicion and fear very often to assert their racial superiority they resort to brutal warfare killing millions by mercilessly raining bombs from the sky above the pathetic incidents of the second world war are striking examples which can never be forgotten never be forgotten by mankind amongst some narrow minded peoples within the wider circles of their ancient nations there exist minor circles of caste and class where the so called brotherhood of the powerful oppressors is so limited that the oppressed are not even permitted to enjoy bare human rights merely because of the ancients of the accidents of birth or class these oppressors are to be pitied because they are confined to the watertight compartments meta is not religious brotherhood either 
owing to the sad limitations of so called right religious brotherhood human heads have been reversed without the least complications complications or complications complications uh, least complications since outspoken men and women have been roasted and burnt alive many atrocities have been per perpetrated which baffled description cruel wars have been waged which mark the pages of the world history even in this supposed supposedly enlightened 20th century the followers of one religion hate or ruthlessly persecute persecute and even kill those of other faiths mers merely because they cannot force them to think as they do or because they have a different label if on account of religious views people of different faiths cannot meet on a common platform like brothers and sisters then surely the mission of compassionate world teachers have pitifully failed sweet matter transcends all these kinds of narrow brotherhood it is limitless in scope and range barriers it has none discrimination it makes not matter enables one to regard the whole world as one's motherland and all as fellow beings just as the sun sheds its ray on all without any distinction even so sublime matter bestows its sweet blessings equally on the pleasant and the unpleasant on the rich and the poor on the high and the low on the vicious and the virtuous on men and women and on human animals <coughs> such was the boundless matter of the buddha who worked for the welfare and happiness of those who loved him as well as of those who hated him and even attempted to harm and kill him the buddha exercised matter equally towards his own son rahul his adversary devdatt his attendant anand his admirers and his opponents this loving kindness should be extended in equal measure towards oneself as towards friend foe and neutral alike suppose a bandit were to approach a person traveling through a forest with an intimate friend a neutral person and an enemy and suppose he were to demand that one of them be offered as victim if the traveler were to say that he himself should be taken then he would have no matter towards himself if he were to say that any one of the other three persons should be taken then he would have no matter towards them such is the characteristic of real matter in exercising this boundless loving kindness one self should not be ignored this subtle point should not be misunderstood for self sacrifice is another sweet virtue and egolessness is yet another higher virtue the culmination of this matter is the identification of one self with all beings making no difference within one self and others the so called i is lost in the whole separatism evaporates oneness is realized there is no proper english equivalent for this graceful pali term meta goodwill loving kindness benevolence and universal love are suggested as the best read renderings the antithesis of meta is anger ill will hatred or aversion meta cannot coexist <coughs> meta cannot coexist with anger or vengeful conduct meta not only tends to conquer anger but also does not tolerate hateful thoughts towards others he who has meta never think of harming others nor does he disparage or condemn others such a person is neither afraid of others nor does he instill fear into any a subtle indirect enemy assails meta in the guise of a friend it is selfish of selfish affection for unguarded meta may sometimes be assailed by lust this indirect enemy resembles a person who lurks after in the jungle for or hills to cause harm to another grief springs from affection but not from meta this delicate point should not be misunderstood 
Parents surely cannot avoid having affection towards their children and children towards their parents, husband towards their wives and wives towards their husbands. Such affection is quite natural. The world cannot exist without mutual affection. The point to be clarified here is that unselfish matter is not synonymous with ordinary affection. A benevolent attitude, attitude is the chief characteristic of matter. He who practices matter is constantly interested in promoting the welfare of others. He seeks the good and beautiful in all but the ugliness in others. Attendant blessing of matter. 1. He who practices matter sleeps happily as he goes to sleep with a light heart, free from hatred. He naturally falls asleep at once. This fact is clearly demonstrated by those who are full of loving kindness. Their fast sleep immediately on closing their eyes. 2. As he goes to sleep with a loving heart, he awakens with an equally loving heart, benevolent and compassionate. Persons often arise from bed with smiling faces. 3. Even in sleep, loving persons are not perturbed or disturbed by bad dreams as they are full of love during their waking hours. They are peaceful in their sleeping hours too. Either they fall into deep sleep or have pleasant dreams. 4. He becomes dear to human beings as he loves others. So do others love him. When a person looks to a mirror with a smiling face, a similar face will greet him. If on the contrary he looks with a wry face or a bad face, he will see a similar reflection. The outside world reacts on one in the same way that one acts towards the world. One full of faults himself is apt to see the evil in others, the good he the good he ignores. Why should we see the ugliness in others when there is evil in the best of us and good in the worst of us? It would be a source of pleasure to all if we could see the good and beautiful in all. 5. He who practices matter is dear to non-humans. Please listen to this. He who, practice, he who practices matter is dear to non-human as well. Animals are also attracted to him. Radiating their loving kindness, ascetics live in wild forests amidst ferocious beasts without being harmed by them. 6. Owing to his power of matter, he becomes immune from poison and so forth unless he is subjected to some inexorable karma or karma or work or mental or physical work. As matter is constructive, healthy force. It has the power to counteract hostile influences just as hateful hateful thoughts can produce toxic effect in the system even so loving thoughts can produce healthy physical effects when the buddha visited his birthplace for the first time his son rahul who was only seven years of age approached him and spontaneously remarked oh ascetic even your shadow is pleasing to me the child was so much dominated by buddha's matter that he deeply felt its magnetic power 7. Invisible deities protect him because of the power of his matter. Please listen this. Invisible deities protect him because of the power of his matter. 8. Matter leads to quick mental concentration. As the mind is not perturbed or disturbed by hostile vibrations, one pointedness can be gained with ease. With mind at peace, he will live in heaven of his own creation. Even those who come in contact with him will also experience that place. 9. <coughs> matter tends to beautify one's facial expression. The face as a rule reflects the state of mind. When one gets angry, the heart pumps blood twice or thrice, three times faster than the normal race. Hated blood rushes up to the face, which then turns red or black. At such times, the face becomes repulsive to sight. Loving thoughts, on the contrary, gladden the hurt and clarify the blood. The face then presents a lovable appearance. It is stated that when the Buddha, after enlightenment, reflects on the causal, causal relation or 
Pathan, Pathan. His heart was so pacified and his blood yellow, red, white, orange and a mixture of these, these emanated from his body. 10. A person imbued with matter dies peacefully as he harbors no thoughts of hatred towards any. Even after death, his serene face reflects his peaceful death. 11. Since a person with matter dies happily, he will subsequently be born in a blissful state if he gained the jhanas or ecstasies. Ecstasy, ecstasies. He will be born in a Brahm real power of matter. Besides this inevitable worldly blessing, matter possesses a magnetic power. It can produce a good influence on others as others even at a distance and can attract others to oneself. Once an intoxicated elephant was driven towards the Buddha in an effort to kill him, the Buddha calmly radiated his love towards the elephant and subdued it. A beautiful story may be cited to show how the Bodhisattva as a boy extended his boundless matter when his own father ordered him to be killed. Young though he was, the Bodhisattva thought to himself, here is a golden opportunity for me to practice my matter. My father stepped before me. My good mother is weeping. The executioner is ready to chop off my hands and feet. I, the victim, am in the center. Love I must all the four in equal measure, without any distinction. May my good father not incur suffering because of this ruthless act. May I become a Buddha in the future. In one of his previous births, Bodhisattva was once practicing the virtue of patience in a royal park. The king, a drunkard man, meant to test his patience. The impatient king kicked him and cut off his hand and feet. Still, he practiced patience. The impatient king kicked him in the chest, laying in a pool of blood almost on the verge of death. The Bodhisattva blessed the king and wished him long life, saying that men like himself never get angry. The Buddha himself has set a noble example as an elephant in the battlefield withstands shot from a bow, says the Buddha, even so will I endure abuse. Verily, most people are undisciplined. This chaotic war weary restless world of today where the nations are arming themselves to their teeth frightened of one another where human life is endangered by nuclear weapon which may be released at any moment is surely in need of this universal loving kindness so that all may live in one world in perfect peace and harmony like brothers and sisters it is practically possible to exercise matter when one is threatened with devastating bombs and other destructive weapons. Well, what can powerless people do when bombs rain from above? Can they avoid such a catastrophe? Catastrophe. Buddhist matter is the only answer to such deadly bombs when one is faced with inexorable death. If all warlike nations could be prevailed upon to substitute this spiritual matter for the destructive weapons of materialism and rule the world not with might and force but with right and love, then only would there be genuine peace and happiness in this world. Leaving the almost practical major issues aside, it is advisable to be concerned with oneself and the rest of the mankind in cultivating this sweet virtue of matter to be to the best of one's ability. How to practice matter? A few practical hints are given below to practice this meditation of loving kindness. Matter should be practiced first towards oneself. In doing so, a person should charge his mind and body with positive thoughts of peace and happiness. He should think how he could be peaceful, happy, free from suffering, worry and anger. He becomes ever to learn the to learn and tries his best not to give occasion for anger to arise. By loving kindness he cuts off all hostile vibrations and negative thoughts. He returns good for evil, love for anger. He becomes ever tolerant. He tries his best not to give occasion for anger to any. Himself beaming with happiness, he injects happiness into others not, not only inwardly but also outwardly by putting his matter into practice in the course of his daily life. 
When he is full of peace and is free from thoughts of hatred, it is easy for him to radiate loving kindness towards others. What he does not possess, he cannot give to others. Before he tries to make others happy, he should first be happy himself. He should know the ways and means to make himself happy. He now radiates his loving kindness towards all his near and dear near and dear ones individually and collectively wishing them peace and happiness and freedom from suffering disease worry and anger diffusing his thoughts of loving kindness towards his relative and friends he radiates them also towards neutrals just as he wished for the dear ones even so he sincerely wishes for the peace and happiness for those who are neutral to him wishing them freedom from suffering disease worry and anger Finally, though this is somewhat difficult, he should radiate his matter in the same way towards those, if any, who are in inimical or adversary to him. If by practicing matter he could adopt a friendly attitude towards those th thought to be inimical towards him, his achievement would be most heroic and commendable. As the Buddha advises, admit those who hate, let him live free from hatred. Starting from himself, he should gradually extend his matter towards all beings irrespective of creed, color or sex including dumb animals until he had identified himself with all, making no distinction whatever. He merges himself in the whole universe and is on with all. He is no more dominated by egoistic feelings. He transcends all forms of separatism, no longer confining himself to watertight compartments, no longer influenced by caste, class, nation, racial or religious prejudice. He can regard the whole world as his motherland and all as fellow beings in the ocean of life. Thank you very much. We will start Karuna in the next video. Thank you very much. Jai Bhim Navutha.